Man, we never get to sore asses on GMBM. Never. I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Ask GC Anything. This week, Simon and Matt are away. Dan's away. We've got an even better replacement. <laughs> we are joined by the legend, Martin Ashton, for Hello. a very special Ask GC Anything. Oh, it is nice to be in here. And it's you're very you. tall. I know, I'll slide down a little bit. Yeah, this my, chair my wheelchair so needs, I need to be able to pump it up or something. <laughs> Yeah. Well, anyway, we'll bear with it. We'll, we'll bear, bear with it. it. We've yeah. asked you guys for a bunch of questions on social media, so we will be getting live-ish questions throughout the show, although the show isn't live. But first, Martin, I really like this question from Purple Eyes, who's asking, does he need a $1,000 bike, or will a cheap $500 bike be a good beginner's bike? What do you reckon? Well, I always, I always think when you're thinking about budget for your bike, it's what you can afford. Um, get out riding is the most important thing. You're going to learn so much from that, and then you're going to start to understand the differences in bikes and the things you want to spend your money on because there is lots of scope in road cycling uh, to spend lots more money. And uh, that's once you've got a bit of experience, that's when you'll know what to spend it on. But yeah, don't go mad at the start. You know, you've just got to get out there riding. Yeah, I reckon, you know, in the UK, a bike for under £500, which I guess is about $750, will yes. be definitely allow you to decide whether or not you really like cycling and want to invest a bit more of your hard-earned cash into it. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, if you decide that, you know, cycling a lot isn't really for you, which is fair enough, although I'd encourage you to cycle a lot, it's a good commuter. It will save you a bit of cash on the train yeah. and you can I mean, And that's still a good amount of money on a bike. That yeah. is not going to be a bad bike. It's going to be know, a good bike. Know, it's going to work pretty well. Seriously well. Anyway, if you'd like to find out what you should prioritise when you buy, say, a used bike or a cheaper bike, Cy Richardson has done a video on how to buy a bike from eBay. My first tip would be to buy a brand that you're familiar with. There is an awful lot of weird stuff lurking around on the internet, but buying a familiar brand at least eliminates some of the risk of going second hand. Yeah, you might not get the warranty, but at least you know that it was decent when the product was new. Next up, Martin, this is kind of mountain bikey, road cycling y question. Perfect. A bit of both. It's from Oliver Fries, who is a mountain bike XC dude from Denmark. And Oliver's asking, basically, why don't road cyclists use dropper posts in UCI races? Oh, you know, what, Oliver, that's a really good question, isn't it? It is. Because actually, that would, that would be pretty cool. Imagine yeah. the guys all coming up over the top of a big climb, and then they're all like, do, 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 all the seats are going down. Yeah. I love it. And you'd be. You'd be quicker, I think. You've got more space over the bike. Get your knee down. Oh my God. Almost. I might have discovered something. And there's loads of benefits here as well, because the UCI has such a tight, lower minimum weight limit on road bikes, that almost now it's quite easy to make a bike reach that weight. So any way that you can yeah, add weight whilst weight, effectively yeah. making it faster. So things like disc brakes, drop a seat post, could well have a benefit. And it, you'd be more aero. It could be brilliant. Although dropper posts don't look too roady at the moment. They're pretty bulky things, you know. They don't have the road bike look just no. yet. As Dan Lloyd demonstrates in this video that we're about to throw yes, to, like yes. it's a colossal bodge the way he got it to work. <laughs> but the findings are quite interesting. Here's Dan trying to decide should road riders use a drop a seat post. Do it. Dan was definitely descending like a boss in that one, wasn't he? He was. It looks cool. I think it's, it's it the works. way forward, just not how Dan executed it. Anyway, this one's from Gordon Moat, and it is specifically about road cycling, but I think we can broaden it out to mountain biking too. And Gordon is saying, what makes the modern peloton so much quicker than in the past? Is it the kit, the wheels, or different training? Mm. Well, it's got to be a lot of things, isn't it? It's the marginal gains across time. Definitely. Uh, tech has just improved, and that's in both sports, you know, the, the tech on the bikes, how much better they're getting. But then actually knowledge in training, you know, knowledge yeah, for in sure. fitness. That's you just, got to be making a big difference. You just have to look at Nike's, you know, sub two hour marathon attempt mm. to see that, you know, by, you know, that yeah, they had a leading car and a load of paces there, but by pushing everything together, things are advancing. Yeah, there is going to be a human limit to what is possible but we probably haven't hit that just yet, have we? No, I mean, and I guess over the years of road cycling, is there even more knowledge and understanding about how the peloton works itself as a Definitely. body moving? I mean, has that changed? Probably, definitely, possibly. possibly. One thing I'm interested in, Martin, is now that skin suits aren't legal for use in downhill races, 
are the riders going faster? Because that would definitely show it was tech and training, not clothing. Uh, that is really hard to answer because there's so many things going on in downhill racing, particularly at the moment. Um, wheel sizes are changing, uh, wheel uh, geometry is changing, the actual geometry of the bike, uh, wheelbase. So much going on. Um, and I guess the course is never the same, you know, I mean, it's it's changing all the time with more riders and with weather so it's really hard to say but it, what is interesting is that there is now a limit on downhill clothing of how much bagginess they can have what? yes um and it's getting really really close to the limit now so everyone has gone baggy off out of their lycra but now it's getting tighter and tighter so the marginal gains uh, e uh, ethic is coming into the uh, the mountain bike side of things for sure but when you were doing trials was it do you you know did you perform better when you wore lycra or not lycra actually you know what honest truth i think i perform better in lycra and i think road bike party is proof that lycra makes you do cool stunts <laughs> there we go gordon so it's a mixture of everything but it's possibly clothing right we've got this one from mark berger and this is something that every cyclist has suffered through he said hey gcn it happened to me i have my first sore ass oh. really bad one with red and bruised skin thanks for the detail mark <laughs> what's the best way to treat it now, wow, don't look to me on this one, Tom. Okay. Don't look well, to me. Okay, I'm going to throw you very quickly to a video, Mark, but like you said, sore asses do happen to everyone who has to sit in a saddle for a protracted length of time. Um, things like clean, but also good cycling shorts help out, making sure you have a saddle that works for you and making sure your saddle is the right height. But that's pretty broad advice. So for some more specific stuff, here's 10 ways to avoid a sore ass while cycling. Cycling shorts are tight for a reason. And that reason is so you don't get friction burns on your most delicate areas. So make sure you get the right shorts for maximum benefit. Too tight, they're going to dig into some of the areas you don't want them digging into, and too loose, and they'll be sliding around on your undercarriage like a duck on a frozen pond. It's time now for the quick fire round. Martin's got his helmet on. Quick what fire! Is it? <laughs> it's the quick fire round. First up, Martin, we've got this one. It's I'm not sure what your answer is going to be. It's from Mark Wengler on Instagram, and he said, who is Martin going to choose as the Giro winner? Um, I think it is going to be... Um, what's this dude? Little dude. Just one around. One on stage. Nairo Quintana. That's the dude. Here. You heard it here first. Quintana. Heard it here first. Someone else said, um, I can't bunny hop. Please help. What's the number one tip to start uh, bunny hopping? Really good tip. Put a stick on the ground. Small stick. Uh, use that to mark where your front wheel bumps off the ground. Bump, wait for the back wheel to feel that bump. Yep. Bump, and then just keep practicing that. Bump, 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 and then take the stick away. You bunny up here. How much training should I do a day from Owen Gray? About nine hours. Nine hours of training a day. It'd be pretty good if you did that. I think you should be I, Actually, I'm, I'm just joking. I used to ride for about an hour and a half a day. Really? really? good ride, yeah. I never used to ride for too long. You can only you can only be interested in it for so long, and if you're trying to do the sort of stuff I used to do on my bike, then you've got to be you've got to really want to do it. If you don't want to do it, it's probably best to leave it till tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> we've got a couple more on Facebook. So we've got um, what did you eat for breakfast? You were telling us about this before, actually. Um, I had brown flakes with sugar this morning. They just looked amazing, but I could have had you know the works, but I just I just got off on saying no. I loved it. Okay. I like putting pressure on myself. When you were filming Road Bike Party and Road Bike Party 2, did you use special wheels for your road bike trials videos from David Betteridge? Um, they weren't special rims, they were just uh, standard FSA rims, um, very good ones. Um, and the hub was a Hope Trials hub, just so I had the engagement on my cassette. So what? I just had a quicker engagement on pedal because I wanted it to be very direct and flickable. And What's, I never knew there was a difference between trials hubs and normal hubs. Yeah, just loads more engagement. So yeah, a trials bike's like zzz, really like buzzing the lock because it's got loads of teeth and loads of engagement points. From uh, Skechelblue on Instagram, why is Peter Sagan racing the Tour of California and not the Giro? I think, personally, I think, right, Stefan behind the camera thinks it's because of money. I don't. I don't. I think he's gone beyond that, Sagan. He's so perfect. And what I think is that he actually is thinking about yellow this year at the Tour. And he's just going for an easy time in California. And he's going to win the Tour this year. He's going to win the Tour de France. I said it first. One I from, know my road bikes. One from me, on connected to Sagan. Yes. How long do you think it would take him to win a world title of mountain biking if he went back to it? 
you think he could? Mm, I think he's got an awful lot of power. And I think he would have to spend a bit of time diluting that down into something that could compete with Scherter over a long race. Um, Scher, you know, Scherter and Absalon are really, really good. So, Sagan, Sagan, Scherter. It's close, all right. I think it'll take him some time, but I think he could do it. He'd need a flatter course. He's good. He's good. Okay. Where's Watty Watsford? What was the best trick you ever nailed? Best trick I ever nailed was a... Ah, uh, it's boring. I'm going to say it's boring. His backflips are so much fun. There's nothing much more they outrageous look cool. as you go towards the ramp and you think, I am going to backflip. And he, no matter how many times you do it, you ride towards the ramp going, really? <laughs> and then you just are do you it. Are you really going to do that? And then you go, and then you have to mean it when you take off. So it's it's pretty serious. When your head's closer to the ground than your wheels, it's always a pretty tricky place to be. More difficult on a road bike or a mountain bike? Uh, surprisingly easy on a road bike. Really? Yeah, yeah. So are bikes, and they're bikes. They've got two wheels and handlebars. They're all the same. A bike is a bike. Links back to our first question. It does. It does. It does. Okay. Thanks for all of your questions, especially the live-ish ones that we got through on social media, and thanks to Martin for joining us. Thank you for having me. I've loved it. I loved it. I like your desk. I may take this. It's very Is that solid. Be okay. It's very nice. It's very nice. Anyway, I think Martin. Yeah, thank you. I don't think we could have done this week without you. If you would like to see Martin back in the show, hit the thumbs up button, and we'll see what we can do. Love to be here. And if you want to see more videos on GCN, then why didn't you throw to a few of my favourites? Your favourites. Um, why don't you click just here for Road Bike Party 2. Bit of a classic, bit of a classic. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like the guys riding in it. It's very good. Um, and <laughs> click over here to see me and Neil teaching Dan how to manual. And he does a good job, actually. Eventually. He does do a good job. Don't Took forget to subscribe to the channel. Our logo is on screen now. And thumbs up. Thumb up like. See you, you, call you, it, see you next time.